Hi everybody, this is Kevin and welcome to another video. And today I'd like to give my initial reactions to the first few episodes of the Black Clover anime. Now, I've been reading the fairy tale manga for like the past month and a half. And initially I was going to like read a volume of the manga and then watch a few episodes. But I found myself getting ahead of myself in the anime. And what I decided to do with that is read the manga all the way through and then watch the anime. So in the interim... I needed another anime to watch, so I was searching online, like, what's another anime similar to Fairy Tale? And the one that kept popping up was Black Clover. Now, Black Clover is a relatively new manga series and anime, and, and the anime ran, actually, has since, you know, took a, a hiatus, I guess, because, you know, the manga is far from over. But uh, it started, the English dub anyway, I believe, from 2017 to, you know, 2021, 170 episodes, or I guess they're taking a little break with the anime to catch up with the manga. And they're actually doing a feature length film now, so that's pretty cool. So I said, hey, what the heck? You know, watch a few episodes before I go to bed each night. And I've gotten up to episode 28 now, which is the start of that opening right there, opening number three. Usually with anime, you know, the first opening is always pretty badass. And then, you know, they're all, all anime openings are pretty good. But I saw opening three and holy crap, does that slap, man? Holy crap. So I've enjoyed it. I, I really have. It's, uh, you know, similar to Fairy Tale, I guess. Uh, with magic and, and such, and a lot of similar voice actors too, although it is the Funimation cast, so, you know, the voice actors sort of go all over the place, and, uh, you know, familiar voices like Chris Sabat voicing Yami, the leader of the Black Bulls, uh, Colleen Clinkenbeard, you have uh, Robert McCollum, and a bunch of others who I'm probably missing off the list, but basically it follows the story of two young wizards, Asta and Yuno, and uh, let's go to the Wikipedia page. I have it up here so I can uh, follow along because there's a lot of characters and a lot of names to keep up with. So here we are. And uh, Asta is voiced by Dallas Reed. He doesn't have a Wikipedia page, huh? And you know, voiced by Micah Solsod. And basically, they're, they're two characters who have reached the age of 15 so they can join the Magic Knights. And they go to join the Magic Knights. And of course, you know, is more gifted in magic abilities. Whereas Asta possesses zero magic whatsoever. And uh, he still wants to, to try his best and become the Wizard King by joining the Magical Knights. And uh, funny stuff early on. That, you know What I've seen so far is the first, I guess, three arcs, I'd say. Or two and a half arcs. And the first arc is Asta and Yuna training to become Magic Knights. And they're both abandoned as orphans, you know, less than a year old. And left to this church to Sister Lily and... <laughs> all throughout their upbringing, Asta is like, Sister Lily, will you marry me? <laughs> and it's so funny because Sister Lily has like magic abilities of her own and she always attacks him back and she's like, no. And Yuno's like, no, dude, she's a nun. She can't marry you even if she wanted to. And Asta's like, I'll make Sister Lily marry me because I'll become the Wizard King. <laughs> and it's hilarious. But they have a, a nice sort of uh, sibling rivalry, despite not being siblings. And uh, maybe they are. I don't know. We haven't gotten to that point yet. They're both abandoned as, as children. And Yuno is very skilled. And, and Asta has no abilities whatsoever. However, once they get to the um, arena, the, the magical capital of Clover, they are uh, given their grimoires. And believe it or not, um, Yuno is given the four-leaf Clover grimoire, which is the same that the initial Wizard King used to defeat the demon long ago. So, you know, they, they pick him. They know that he's got... Strong magical capabilities. Whereas Asta is given this five-leaf clover grimoire. And he has the ability to wield this magically nullifying sword. And anything that he strikes with the sword nullifies that user's magic. So, you know, the fact is, and it shows him throughout all his training regiments. And he's continually doing push-ups and training his body and, and doing whatever he can despite not having any magical abilities. So, with his sheer per per perseverance and strength and everything... He's actually selected by Yami, Captain Yami of the Black Bulls squad, who takes him in, in the group because, you know, he sees that the kid has guts and is willing to train. And uh, it, it sort of is reminiscent of, like, you know, the Guild of Fairy Tale and that there's a ragtag group of characters. Uh, again, you see on here, Noel Silva, who is actually a royal, whereas Yuno and Asta are commoners. And she, at, at this point, when she's selected by uh, the Black Bulls, she isn't able to control her magic fully. And it sort of disgraced the Silva name because they're part of the Silver Eagles Guild. So she's at the lowly guild of the Black Bulls. And 
as you meet, so you have, um, here's the Magical King, Julius Nova Crono, again, Robert McCollum, and uh, the Black Bulls, you have the whole cast of characters here, so it's led by Yami Tsukahiro, again, Christopher Sabat, and he's just this badass who's just sitting there uh, wearing his tank top with his giant sword, always smoking a cigarette, reading the newspaper, <laughs> and it's hilarious. Of course, you know Sabat as Vegeta and uh, Zoro from One Piece and all sorts of other stuff. Um... You have Magna, voiced by Ian Sinclair, and that's like the first sort of quest. They send uh, Magna along with, with Asta and Noel to this this area that's being attacked by uh, evil wizards, and they're trying to obtain like this jewel or whatever, and in the midst of that, they all have to work together using their, their lack of magic power. Like Magna, he's obviously somewhat experienced, and he has fire magic, whereas no Noel has like this water magic that she can't fully used quite yet although she's able to create water barriers and then is able to fully harness it and then asta has this blade that can just cut away any opponent's magical abilities and in the midst of fighting these evil wizards magna's mentor and you know the elder of the village actually passes away he dies in the battle defending the villagers so you know there, there's like same thing with fairy tale too in the comparisons i hate to keep bringing that up but you know that's what i'm comparing it to is that you get like a lot of these humor filled episodes um you know a lot of action and also a lot of sadness like seeing people pass away like that so interesting stuff there um you have luck who in the next arc you meet him he's like an electric mage and he he's he wants to do things solo but then comes to the the realization that he has to work with the team to utilize his magic abilities to the, to the best he can and work with asta and noel you have uh who else? You have Charmy. <laughs> this is great, dude. This little girl. So all she does is eat. <laughs> it's hilarious. She just sits there and eats. And in the last arc, she gets all mad. And she actually gets a crush on Yuno. And to defend him, she like tur she's like a little tiny girl. And then she gets really big. And it turns out she has a lot more magic abilities than we thought. <laughs> but her gag is she likes to constantly eat stuff. You have uh, Vanessa here who uh, <laughs> gets drunk. She just drinks wine all day. She reminds me of Kana from Fairy Tale. Uh, Gordon, who I can't understand what the fuck he's saying. He's there, he's like this pasty white character, and the whole time you see him, he they should put like subtitles to what he's saying, but he just like mumbles. He's like, bruh, bruh, bruh. I can't understand what word he's saying. It's like this this whole group of quirky characters. Um uh, you have Seke, you have all these 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 crazy dudes going on the the Silver Eagle squad. So like a million characters, man. Um like I said, I've I've gone through like the first 28 episodes, seen the first few arcs. Um, the, the second arc actually sees the, um, the Black Bulls team up with Yuno's group, and he brings along this, this healing mage, Mimoso, and Klaus, who is not the captain, but sort of high-ranking individual, and, and the whole time he's there, he's constantly messing with his glasses, like, he has these glasses on, and he's constantly, like, fixing them, and Asta, without showing any respect towards him, just, oh, hey, Specs, how you doing, four eyes, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's so funny, and then Klaus is like, oh, this insufferable commoner, how dare you speak to me that way, but eventually, as their story unfolds, they go up against this guy named Mars, who is the villain, and, and he's trying to raid this dungeon, he's from a, a neighboring kingdom, and he has all these magical powers, um, where he, he, he wields like this giant sword that he tries to strike down and, and Asta with his uh, magical nullifying sword is able to, to break it and they all have to work together and at that point Klaus you know he's constantly being disrespected by Asta but after seeing Asta you know defend the team like that he gets a newfound respect for him and it's a nice touching moment where he's all wounded and he's like are you hurt Asta oh are you okay <laughs> I, I love the whole change in pace and also you get like these little moments too with Noelle where, you know, she's in a room with, with Asta alone and she's like, oh, I'm alone with him and she starts blushing. And then another character, uh, Mimosa, there's like a little love triangle between them all because, you know, Asta saves her as well and she starts blushing. And, oh, I'm so happy to see you. It gives him a hug and everything and, you know, a lot of great stuff. Like, like it's got all the classic shonen stuff. It's got, you know, some fan service -y scenes with the character of Vanessa who's got her cleavage hanging out. You had uh, Noelle battling and then her... Her shirt gets, like, torn up, and then Asta's like, oh, uh, <laughs> you know, you're showing a little here, <laughs> and she starts blushing, and, you know, it's just a fun, comfy thing, and I, I really do like just sitting down at the end of the day, watching a few episodes before I go to bed, and that's what I've been doing, watching Black Clover, and, 
you know, I, I've mentioned in the past I've been hesitant to try these long-running series just because, you know, you look at, I always use One Piece as an example. I mean, the manga is over a thousand chapters and the anime, I think, is, what, 700 episodes or something? There's no way I could even start that. With this, 170 episodes, I'm up to episode 29 or 28 so far, so I can get caught up pretty quickly, and uh, it's on a hiatus right now. And, uh, you know, they got a, the movie coming, so who knows? I'll be watching three or four episodes a night and get caught up before I know it. And I was also looking on right stuff just to see about the manga because, of course, if it's an anime, it's always a manga. And the thing is, the manga is, like, <laughs> not available at all. Look at Volume 1, out of stock. Volume 26, Volume 27 is coming out. Uh, out of stock. 25 is in stock. 24, 23, they're all out of stock, man. How am I going to read the manga? So... It's very good. Uh, it's, it's cool to see a lot of the familiar faces. Like, here's Yami right here. He's the leader of the um, Black Bulls, voiced by Chris Sabat. He's just, like, a total badass. Uh, here's more of the Black Bulls characters. I just saw them down there. You have... Um, oh, I want to I see the whole thing. You have... Um, there's Magna right there. You have Luck. Vanessa, there she is, drinking with her boobs hanging out. And... Uh, it's very comfy and fun, and I definitely recommend it if you're looking for a, a new anime to watch. Here, this must be like the whole dungeon arc. There's, um... Uh... Oh, that's... I, I forget this dude's name, but <laughs> this dude has appeared a few times. He's part of the Black Balls as well, and he has this picture of his sister, Marie. And anytime he interjects into the conversation, he pulls up Marie. He's like, oh, I'll tell you what Marie would think about 